It's my privilege to bring you greetings at the start of a new year. As the chapters of the New Testament unfold, the church spreads out around the world. Real people, real places, cross geographical, national and cultural boundaries. They enter cities and communities, step forward with a passion to make Jesus known and witness to him, not just through their words, but through their very lives. They face huge challenges, opposition, persecution, hardship on every side. And what emerges as a consistent and deeply ingrained characteristic among them is what they call patient endurance. It's not the most glamorous or flashy phrase, but again and again in the Gospels, in the letters of Paul and Peter and John, the call and the encouragement comes to live forward from deep reserves of worship and prayer, fellowship and shared devotion to Jesus with this powerful and practical mix of patience and endurance. Here's John writing at the beginning of the book of Revelation. I, John, your brother and partner in the suffering and the kingdom, and the patient endurance that are in Jesus was on the island called Patmos on account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet and I saw one like a son of man. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead, but he laid his right hand on me saying, fear not, I'm the first and the last and the living one. I died and behold, I'm alive forevermore and have the keys of death and Hades. There's no doubt for John and the wider church that they were living through traumatic and troubled times. But he declares himself one with them as a brother and partner through tough times. And he declares that they're part of a greater kingdom. And because of that, he reminds them that they're partners together living with patient endurance, that the kingdom is here, that Jesus is Lord, and that God is working by his spirit. Wow, what a reminder for us as we step into a new year, when the times seem to be continually uncertain. Let's take from John's words, fresh faith and hope for our season as we enter this new year. First, to live with confidence. As John speaks about his encounter with the risen, glorified Christ, he falls down as though dead. But Jesus says to him, don't be afraid. Our confidence in the year ahead is in Jesus, in his promises and his promised presence with us. Second John's words tell us to live with courage. It's time to keep going, to keep believing. There's an urgency for us in tough times to continue to live more intentionally as Jesus people, to love him, to serve him, to witness to him courageously together. And third, John's words reveal that we're called to live with compassion. These last two years have caused us all to walk more softly and tenderly in our shared humanity with our friends and family, our work colleagues, with our neighbours and in our wider communities. We've got to live outwards as good news people. But how do we do that when we're tired, when we're empty, we feel helpless, when despite our best intentions, our resources just seem to run it's right there in John's own words. We can only do it in Jesus. It's not natural that we love each other. It's supernatural. Our capacity is limited and often fails us under pressure, but Jesus fills us with his compassion. So on behalf of Elam's national leadership team, right across the whole Elam church family and network, let me encourage you for today and for the year ahead. We come as fresh as brothers and sisters, asking Jesus to fill us with fresh confidence, with fresh courage and with fresh compassion and committing ourselves together in the patient endurance to keep on believing and obeying Jesus. And he promises to be present with us every moment, every situation, his power, his peace. So. May God bless and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. 
May he be gracious to you and bring you peace. Amen. Amen.